In this video, we're going to go ahead and solve this integral right here, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root sine of x with respect to x. What's up, everybody? It's a gorgeous day here on Saturday, December 18th, 17th, one of those. I lose track of my day sometimes. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and solve this integral using a basic u substitution, and you're going to be really fascinated with the generalization that comes out of it. Okay, so here we go. So as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and do a simple u substitution, but it's actually going to be a little different. We're going to start off by making u equal to sine squared of x. I know it's a little different than what we're used to, but just bear with me. So now let's go ahead and find the differential. We're going to take the derivative of this, which is going to give us du equals, and then we're going to go ahead and apply the chain rule. We have 2 sine of x times the derivative of what's inside, which is going to be uh, cosine of x with respect to x. So now we can go ahead and divide this to the other side, and we have du over 2 sine x cosine x is equal to our differential. And that's exactly what we're going to need for this particular value right here. Okay, now let's continue. Let's go ahead and find what the square root of x is going to be in uh, with respect to u. So if we take the square root of this, we're going to have u to the 1 half is equal to sine of x. And if we do it again, we're going to have u to the 1 fourth is equal to the square root of x. And that's exactly what we want. So now we know that we're going to go ahead and rewrite this in there. So now our integral is going to become integral of u to the 1 fourth times our differential, which is going to be this value right here. We have du over 2 sine x cosine x. Okay, notice that I haven't changed my parameters because now our parameters are going to be in terms of u. So when x is equal to 0, if we plug it in here, we're going to have x is equal to 0, then u is going to simply be just 0. And now if we have x is equal to pi over 2, which was our upper parameter, we plug it in there, we're going to have sine of pi over 2, which is 1 squared. Now we're going to have u is equal to 1. Perfect. So now our lower parameter is going to be 0, upper parameter is going to be 1. But we're still not done yet because we have to start rewriting the sine and the cosine in terms of u's. Before I do that, let's go ahead and bring the 1 half on the outside. We have the integral from 0 to 1, and now we have u to the 1 fourth over, let's go ahead and take care of that sine. So remember, sine, we know is going to be u to the 1 half. And let's talk about cosine for a bit. Okay, in order to find a value for cosine in terms of u, we're going to go ahead and start thinking about the Pythagorean identity. Recall that 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x, so we can take the square root of both sides. 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine x. Ooh, this is not good because I kind of put it in here. Uh, but anyway, now we know sine squared is equal to u, which is up here. So that's exactly what we're going to have in here. We're going to have root 1 minus u is equal to cosine x. In other words, 1 minus u to the power of 1 half is going to equal to cosine x. I should probably have put that somewhere on this side over here. But let's just rewrite this on the bottom. Integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 1 fourth over u to the 1 half times our sine, which we said was, uh, oh, we already wrote it, my bad, and then times our cosine. And now our cosine is going to be 1 minus u to the power of 1 half with respect to u. Okay, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We have the integral from 0 to 1. Let's go ahead and combine this. 1 fourth minus 1 half is going to be u to the negative 1 fourth. And then we're going to go ahead and bring this to the top. And that's going to be 1 minus u to the negative 1 half with respect to u. And I'm not sure if you kind of recognize this integral right here. Okay, so here's the integral that we have, and this is exactly what we want to mimic. This is the beta function. The beta function is this integral right here where you have the power of a minus 1, and then you have 1 minus x to the power of b minus 1. This is very similar to this right here. We just need to figure out what the value of a and b are are going to be. <laughs> and in this case, this integral here is equal to the gamma of a times the gamma of b over the gamma of a plus b. So let's go ahead and talk about this. We need to find what the a value is. So a minus 1 should equal to negative 1 fourth. So a minus 1 should equal to negative 1 fourth. If we add the 1 to the other side, we get that a is equal to just 3 fourths. And we're going to do the same thing here. b minus 1 should equal negative 1 half. So b minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half. B is now equal to 1 half. That's really cool. So now we know that this right here is 1 half times the beta function evaluated at 3 fourths and 1 half. 
And we already know that this is going to equal to this expression here, gamma of A times gamma of B over gamma of A plus B. So we're simply just going to have gamma of 3 fourths times gamma of 1 half over this 1 half is just going to go on the bottom. So we have gamma of the sum of these two right here, which is going to be 5 fourths. And you can simply clean this up. You can make this a root um, pi and just be done with it. But this is our solution here. Ah, I'm hoping that. I don't know if you were expecting that, but that is exactly how we derive this integral right here, and it becomes the gamma function. And that's all I have for you nerds today. Please feel free to subscribe, follow me on Instagram as well, and if TikTok hasn't been banned, follow me on there. I'll see you on the next one.